Hi guys. It is a gray rainy day, but we need the rain here in the Point Lonesome Swamp here on this Saturday morning. It is March 6th, 2021, and uh, I need to get to the laundry pile from hell to uh, get something accomplished on this dreary day here in the end times. But before I do, I want to uh, thank uh, my old buddy, Brother Mike from Austin, Texas, who keeps me apprised of this. So anyway, guys, uh, this uh, his email is from, he sent me this link to some outfit called Prezi. P-R-E-Z-I. I have no idea who Prezi is, anything about them, so it would probably take about eight hours to go through this website, which is, uh, it's basically about, uh, you know, the corona panic and about how the, is, killing all these people and so anyway the title of this posting is reports of injury and death and they start off the first 50 the first 50 pages of this document are primarily reports of death from the okay so I'm just gonna read a couple of these so what this is it, it, it's, it's mostly um, scouring what they claim to be uh, Facebook postings most of the, these are various social media postings uh, you know over the past couple of months since they rolled out the and uh, so anyway, we're going to start with Patience Latonda. Uh, this is what Patience Latonda had. She posted on January uh, 18th. I am in the healthcare field. I work with patients who have. So I decided to get the to prevent bringing it home to my family, not knowing I would end up like this. The whole right side of my face is swollen, my lymph glands are swollen, and I had... Not everyone that is, has had these symptoms. Why did it happen to me? I don't know. But please do your research before Okay, now, oh no, we have an obituary from Brittany Hall Perez, who on January 12th, uh, supposedly, according to this, uh, posted this picture of herself and saying that, I guess, save lives. And Brittany, on January 12th, was posting, say yes. And then, on January 13th, uh, from the Hampton Cove Funeral Home dot com, obituary page we have 24 hours after Brittany Hall Perez uh, said yes we have her obituary Brittany Hall Perez passed away on January 13th in Woodstock Georgia at the age of 39 yes Brittany was always a free spirit, 
and opened her heart to all. Yes, uh, Brittany is survived by her husband, blah, 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 their two daughters. And anyway, guys, I could go on through dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of, according to this uh, article from Prezi, P R E Z I dot com, what they do is that these people would go on to uh, their various social media sites and encourage people to, uh, and then within one day to about 10 days, you, they post their obituaries that one day to 10 days after that these people ended up dead. And that's all I know. So, so guys, you know, as I wrote to Mike, and I forwarded this on, if, if anybody wants the link to this, uh, to this thing floating around the internet now, you need to send me an email. Send me an email to Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com, and I will send you the link, and you can make your own call on it. And so this, I, I'm just going to give my, what I told Mike and the other people I sent it to. Okay, guys, <clears throat> you know, I have five years of college and journalism training, and, and I was a, uh, you know, for how many years before I became a clueless moron real estate agent, for about seven years, uh, I was a, uh, <coughs> a combination uh, journalist, uh, you know, print journalism. I was the, a news editor for a paper for two years where my job, uh, as all news editors' jobs are, uh, from the alternative to the mainstream, uh, is to look at the information that you're given and to, you know, you got to start off with a hunch. You've got to, uh, as you learn everywhere from the teachings of Don Juan Matus from Carlos Castaneda, right up through journalism school, the first thing that anybody, any reporter or editor should do before deciding whether to release some information to the public is just put it on what my friend would call uh, my friend would call her pendulum and see if the pendulum uh, is saying yes or no uh, it's sometimes known as the bullshit detector just how does this register on my bullshit meter? Just reading, you know, the first time you're exposed to this information, trying to decide is this information total, complete bullshit? Uh, is it absolute? Is every word of it true? You know, is every word of this true? Is every word of this complete, unadulterated horseshit? Or, as you usually find when you spend the time and energy uh, to dig deeper uh, into uh, the story, uh, to, to find out, uh, you know, spend some time researching the facts. So if I were a news editor, <clears throat> At this point, uh, where we are on a planet, and a reader uh, had sent me this and told me, uh, you know, as, as a media gatekeeper, that they think this information should be spread to a wider audience. Well, the first thing I would have done is, is looked at it. So I spent about 30 minutes looking at this. I got about a tenth of the way th through. And, and, and my pendulum was somewhere in the middle. Okay, somewhere in the middle. 
Uh, so if I had been a news editor <clears throat> and I had uh, unlimited funding and I did not have the, uh, the publisher above me, uh, you know, just immediately saying you, we are not going to touch this story with a 10-foot pole. Uh, if, if, if I had those freedoms, the time, the energy, the money, the reporter staff, I would have put a couple of reporters on here and I would have done some work myself. So you, you could, there, there's dozens if not hundreds of leads in this story for uh, any sort of uh, independent freelance journalist wanting to get to the truth about the... Uh, I would suggest you start you know, that's the first one I read. These are supposedly public records. You should not have that much time uh, and, and spend that much time and energy vetting this, these stories. Uh, and, and you should find out pretty soon uh, how, you know, whether there's any validity to it. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, while I probably do have the time to do it, uh, but other than the time, I, I, I simply don't have the energy and the other resources it would take me to uh, spend. <coughs> it would probably altogether between, it, it would take, I, I would, this story requires, I would say about, 500 hours of investigative reporting to find out the preponderance of evidence. You're looking for, uh, this is Journalism 101, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're looking for the preponderance of evidence. Do these uh, stories here, number one, uh, do they check out on, quote, social media, whatever that means, but the obituaries are, uh, are a matter of public record. Uh, for these people who have died, uh, it, it, that would be the first thing, is to determine, did this person die? It's not that hard to find, like they just quoted the name of the funeral home. You know, this is all public record, so first thing I would do is uh, is confirm the obituary. That's the number one thing. And assuming that checked out, then what I would do is, is to the best of my ability, to confirm whether they made the post about you, you know, from one to ten days before they ended up dead. All right, and uh, this, uh, and, and even then, so then you get the confirmation that they made that posting uh, before they died, and, and, the, and the preponderance of evidence is building. <clears throat> now, could they have gone on social media and lied out their ass? about and uh, recommending to everyone in their social network that they go out. Uh, why would they have any reason to lie? But, but, but confirming that something was said on a Facebook posting, you know, you still got to leave an asterisk. Now, I don't know how much work it would take to confirm the information inside the posting that they... I, I honestly don't know with HIPAA uh, guidelines and, and, and all of this how hard it would be. It, it, my, my guess is if you really spent it, if, 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 you, if you just picked 10 of these out, and really spent uh, the time and energy and money it would take 
to uh, confirm that this person is or was, in this case, a real person, did this person really die uh, in the past three months? Uh, that's the easy part to confirm. The next thing, did they really make this posting uh, one to ten days before they died? And then that extra level was the information that they posted uh, real? And really, I, I would, uh, I, I would have. That's what my reporters would have been. That would have been their assignment to answer those three questions on ten of these cases, and then you would look at how many of the ten panned out. Are you following me? Did ten? Did 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 zero out of ten pan out? That this was. 100% unadulterated horseshit. Everything in this, uh, in, in this link, my buddies. And, or, on the other hand, did 10 out of 10 of them uh, pan out? Uh, my guess is it would be somewhere between that number. It would be somewhere between 0 and 10, and then the decision that the, the, the editor and ultimately the publisher would face is, uh, is where the preponderance of evidence is. So if one of them, if even one of them out of the ten proved to be fake news, proved to be bullshit, do you, th one out of ten, you say, okay, uh, since one of them was fake news, we need to throw out the whole batch, and that's called risking throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, and, and on the other side uh, of the question is, even if one of the ten, only one of the ten, claims that are being made, if 90% of them uh, turned out to be fake news, just the fact that one out of ten of them, uh, the information posted here uh, on, on this inflammatory uh, link that uh, Mike sent to me, if, if one out of the ten came out to be true. Uh, so either this story is you know, it should be the number one story. Uh, you know, it should have a headline this big across the top of the New York Times that this should be the number one story on planet Earth today. Uh, it should either be that uh, or it, it should be over there and, and probably over there on Alex Jones and everywhere else they're talking about this. But my guess is the truth is somewhere in the middle and so that's why I told Mike, I, 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 you know, like, uh, I, I'm putting it, I, I call this the Bigfoot fence. I said I am putting this information on what I call my Bigfoot fence, uh, meaning that uh, I don't know. I cannot, there is nothing anywhere in my life history, I have never seen a Bigfoot. And I've spent a lot of time looking for the son of a bitch. I have never seen a Bigfoot, I've never seen a Bigfoot track, uh, whatever, but I do not. Uh, rule out the fact of Bigfoot's existence. I don't know whether uh, Bigfoot exists or not. There is some very good circumstantial evidence. And, uh, and that's the other thing. If every one of these is true, uh, it would be a circumstantial case. Uh, but anyway, guys, you better believe uh, you will not ever be hearing uh, this story on here on YouTube, uh, you know, but as, as I told the people I forwarded this to, you know, look at the information in here with a, an, an 
well, I didn't say this, but what, what I was implying, an open yet skeptical mind. It is that balance, uh, you know, between having an open mind where your mind is so open that your fucking brain uh, falls out on the floor or that you're so skeptical, you know, I, 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 the vast majority of people that you would send this to, like my sister, for instance, if I sent her this link, she would never open it. She would never open the link and she would, uh, you know, she would email me back, I told you to stop sending me this fucking right-wing conspiratard garbage. I guarantee you my college-educated nurse sister would, would not spend one second of her life even looking uh, at this information and she would immediately, without even reading it, label it, uh, you know, fake news from these uh, Trump tarred anti-science uh, conspiratards. But anyway, guys, I am, but as I wrapped up, I, you know, people I sent it out to and I'll wrap it up this way, Although I have this, uh, this information, I, I have it hanging off of the Bigfoot fence and, until uh, I spend the time and energy, which I'm never going to spend, finding out if any of this is true or all of it's true or none of it's true. Uh, I am not, more than ever, I am not going to be lining up to get the fucking... It ain't, it, 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 I, I am less likely to get the, as I would have been uh, yesterday, and that wasn't very likely. I'm just giving it more time. Anyway, we will see if uh, YouTube pulls down this video, see if the YouTube bots can read my lips. But anyway, if you want to see this subversive link that uh, Brother Mike is sending around, just send me an email to Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com. I will uh, send it along and you can decide for yourself what you want to do with the information. Anyway, enough procrastinating. I have got to get to the laundry pile from hell. Bye, guys.